Hello and welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're talking cycling news behind the desk here in my office. Well, in fact, this week we've seen a bunch of new products get released, a few things to be aware of, a couple of bummers in the cycling industry, but of course we'll end it off with some information and some pretty pictures about the Sasha... 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 Thanks for joining me for episode one. Let's get into what happened this week in March. And in fact, this week started as March 5th on Sunday and on March 10th, just today, Schwalbe announced a warning about fake online stores. Now this is especially important to know because as things are going on sale and we're all looking for crazy deals, there's gonna be some unscrupulous websites popping up trying to take your hard-earned money and don't let that happen. Schwalbe is warning of this. I, in fact, had to deal with a spoofed website and it was no fun and no fun for anyone involved. Uh, well, Bike Radar has gone through and given us six tips to uh, spot a counterfeit website and I've got a little bit to add. So here, when they're looking at false or fake websites, the things that you should look out for are check the domain name. Now, schwalbe.com would be their domain name for their website. I believe that's what they call out, or rather, Schwalbe Tires. See, it's important to check that out. But also, while you're looking at it, make sure you browse the website to see what else is for sale and what all is on sale. Check the contact details. You know, in my experience, they spoofed the address, but they didn't spoof the phone number because they wanted you to call in and take advantage of you over the phone. So make sure that that all is legitimate with what you see on Google. Check the payment methods. That's a great tip. Some of these places are looking for weird ways of payment. Um, definitely don't cash app on somebody's website. And uh, is the site encrypted? Cheap knockoff websites will be done in a flash because they also know they go away in a flash. And of course, finally, check the review sites and social media. Now this is pretty important because it's not at all uncommon when somebody spoofs a website that they also spoof their social media accounts as well. So be aware, buyer be aware, and uh, don't get yourself caught. You know, buy from some trusted sources or even better, your local bicycle retailer. Speaking of things at a local bicycle retailer, we have this new Specialized Globe Hall ST. Now, the Hall ST stands for short tail, which might make you think a long tail is coming, but one of the things that makes this really neat is actually in the classification of this. Now, it's not at all uncommon to see other brands out there with these short tail cargo bikes uh, that feature a class two system. Class two in the one, two, three system here in the States, most, uh, most of the United States follow this. Uh, class one is 20 miles per hour, pedal assist only. Class two is 20 miles per hour, pedal assist or throttle. And in this case, this bike is actually a class three, meaning it's up to 28 mile per hour assisted speed, but no throttle. That to me makes this pretty interesting to take a look at because this whole system being a, a class three, it is still running these 20 inch wheels with three and a half inch wide tires. So kind of that, that smaller, fatter tire, a little bit lower down to the ground, hopefully for stability, but also that fat tire for the junky roads that are around here, uh, at least up in Massachusetts. But this system also is set up to fit somebody four and a half feet to six foot four, I believe. Yeah, that's the number there. And one of the neat things, if you look at it, is actually a dual telescoping seat post. Of course, you have adjustable handlebar height, all that kind of stuff. Carries up to 419 pounds uh, gear plus rider, as well as uh, that's about 190 kilos, if, I, uh, if I'm correct. So this bike, $2,700, that does not include a $200 destination fee online or in the local shop. Uh, all the accessories are separate, although there are specific accessories for the bike. You can carry it around uh, with all sorts of gear. And there's actually a child seat on back, so pretty interesting. Now, speaking of interesting e-bikes, uh, well, we've got here yet another brand of car 
a car manufacturer that's coming into the e-bike space. So if you were to look at that, yeah, that looks like an Audi driver now, doesn't it? <laughs> of course, I kid a little bit, but Audi has released a Dakar inspired Enduro EMTB. Now this Enduro EMTB is actually a rebadged Fantic. Uh, we'll look at that in a second, but I gotta say it is way better than when Hummer came out with their two wheel drive, $4,000 hub motor Hummer e-bike thing. Ugh. All these car brands are coming through, trying to make e-bikes and at least Audi is doing it somewhat right by having uh, Fantic come out and uh, do their 1.9. So in the specs of the rebadged Fantic XEF 1.9, this bike has a Brose mid-mounted motor, 720 watt hour battery, which is absolutely huge, and a max torque of 90 Newton meters. Pretty cool looking, and I'm just hoping it doesn't bear the same tragic end that the Audi uh, Dakar race car did. Oof. No matter how many times I see that happen, I, I saw that on the live stream uh, uh, when the Dakar was happening, but oof, no good. Well, as we go on from that, let's talk about something that is pretty cool. That there is a brand new DT Swiss 350 hub. The DT350 has long been known as one of the most durable and uh, affordable high-end hubs. I say affordable because out of all the spectrum of your fancy stuff, the 350 strikes that just nice balance of high-end performance at a reasonable cost. Now the new DT350 drops some weight as well as it doubles its engagement. So if you're not familiar with these systems, the DT350 runs off of a star ratchet mechanism, which is effectually two ratchets that kind of lock together or bounce on springs as you're freewheeling. Now in DT's lineup, they have their 350, 240, and 180 as aftermarket hubs. And of course, they have their 360 and 370 that you come across on their OEM build uh, parts as well as their complete wheel sets. Now on both the 360 and 370, those are three Paul ratcheting mechanisms rather than that high-end star ratchet. Although the new 370 you can get with an LN kit, which is effectively the star ratchet mechanism that is now in the new DT350. So on this new DT350, a couple of things to mention here. This is gonna come from 20 to 32 spokes. So you've got pretty much every setup that you can do. Uh, it does come in at a front weight of 139 grams and a rear weight of 244, which is claimed to be a 10% decrease from the prior generation. But more interestingly, that uh, new star ratchet mechanism that's inside of it, the 36SL, which is the lightweight version of the 36 tooth engagement star ratchet mechanism and that star ratchet mechanism is up from the 18 tooth which means we are now down to only 10 degrees of free play in your pedals so those mountain bikers among us or people looking for a nicer sounding hub that's a nice upgrade now moving into some things that aren't as great although this one is a good topic to talk about is new york city has a new e-bike law that's going into effect that uh, is going to require every e-bike sold in the city to pass the ul 2849 battery standard now the ul standard 2849 is about the safety of the battery the lithium ion pack uh, that are in the e-bikes and this is especially important because even Consumer Reports has a few articles about some of the dangers of these unknown e-bike brands that you see on major, you know, uh, marketplaces, let's call them, that are being sold with really no support behind them or real companies behind them. So basically, if you're looking at an e-bike that does not have uh, that UL certification, is both a potential fire hazard for yourself as well as you shouldn't have it in New York City. Anyways, very nice to see that New York City is doing something about that, and I'm hoping more legislation comes across because it's a little bit of the Wild West out there right now. 
And speaking of that, I should mention a big shout out to Call the Recycle, which is a nonprofit that is paired up with People for Bikes for a sustainable recycling program for e-bike batteries. Now, e-bike batteries, when they go bad, uh, they run out of juice, whatever it might be where they can no longer be recharged or safely used, you gotta do something with them and you definitely don't wanna throw them away. So Call the Recycle paired up with People for Bikes for a way industry-wide to be able to bring your e-bike battery in to a participating retailer, be able to drop it off and let them safely handle the transportation, discharge, whatever it may be, to get that battery to a recyclable condition. Should shout out that there are quite a few brands uh, that are participating in this. Brands like Trek, Specialized, Santa Cruz, Giant, all those nice brands like that are participating, which means typically about $15 of a purchase is going towards funding this and looking forward to the future and sustainability. Now, unfortunately, with everything changing in the world, Zwift has laid off 15% of its staff. Tech layoffs are something we've been seeing in the news, especially with some of the changes in the economy. But also, cycling indoors uh, is definitely seeing a little bit of a drawback. During the pandemic, smart trainers were kind of on the rise as we went into the pandemic, but then they became super popular and super important as riders no longer had the choice to be able to ride outside or go to their gym. And cycling went indoors, went virtual, and Zwift is a great way to do it. I, I love my Zwift account, but like many, I only use it during the winter, and in many cases, I suspect some of these people are going back to their prior gym memberships or things like that. I'm hoping that this layoff doesn't affect uh, Zwift from being able to continue to make progress because it's a nice service uh, that selfishly, I like to enjoy. Now, uh, speaking of bad things, this is kind of interesting. So a manufacturer that was selling helmets at Walmart uh, for $13 is uh, unfortunately being called out by the CPSC saying that the helmets do not comply with its positional stability, retention system, impact attenuation, and labeling requirements for bicycle helmets. And in fact, if you look at your bicycle helmet or pretty much any riding, uh, cycling, skating, snowboard, all those helmets, they'll have a CPSC uh, certification that's on there stating that it conforms to the minimum safety requirements of the CPSC. Now, cheap helmets can be out there, but $13 is pretty inexpensive for a helmet, especially one with that wild and crazy faux carbon design. But what's especially disappointing is this brand, which I can't pronounce, but you can take a look at there, is refusing to recall the helmets. So the CPSC is urging people to cut the straps, no longer use it, and it's a real bummer that it doesn't seem like there's gonna be a, a way for those who bought those helmets to get it replaced. And on that bummer, let's end on a height because the Shasta Gravel Hugger Race uh, just happened March 4th earlier this week in Montague, California. So that's off uh, Northern California. Uh, Shasta, uh, Mount Shasta, I should say, is a beautiful area up there. Uh, I'd love to go out there and ride, but basically uh, the Shasta Gravel Race uh, that ride is typically done with a, with a full hug is a 100 mile ride with 4,700 feet of climbing. But this year, because of the weather and the conditions, uh, they actually shortened the rides to be a 80 mile ride and a 62 mile ride. And I forget what the, uh, the shorter ride was, but basically it looked like a pretty eventful day. Uh, 4,500 feet of climbing on that 80 mile route. And just, boy, is that beautiful. Although, of course, some of the conditions, especially in that one, are looking quite tough. But one day, uh, I think it would be just awesome to be able to get out and enjoy a ride like that. And with that, I hope you get out this weekend for a great ride yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me some of your thoughts down in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this, as well as bike reviews too.